It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Alaska Narvanoche head men's ice hockey coach, Eric Largan. Largan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Brandon. Appreciate you taking the time to uh, be able to invite me on the show. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in your college coaching career as a men's ice hockey coach? Yeah, I don't think it was something where you knew that, you know, you wanted to get into coaching or anything like that. Like my my journey started right after I was done playing in college here. Had an opportunity where a uh, uh, assistant coach had just left the Fairbanks Ice Dogs, which is a North American Hockey League team. It's a junior hockey team. Kids that are 16 to 20 that typically uh, NCAA teams recruit from. And their assistant had left late and I didn't really know what I was going to do. I was thinking about either doing law school or, you know, just getting started with a normal nine to five job and happened to have an opportunity where I could jump on the ice and thought I was doing more of the goalie coaching. And then it evolved into being the full-time assistant and I liked it. I already, t- I always told myself, yeah, just one more year, one more year. And, you know, here I am been doing it for, you know, whatever, 15 years or almost 15 years now. So it's uh, been a great journey and yeah, just excited that I had a, <laughs> had the opportunity that was given to me by Fairbanks. How is it like obviously being a college ice hockey player and playing for Alaska? Yeah, it's, it's unique, right? Like I'm sure, People are listening. They're probably wondering and didn't really know much about the, uh, you know, about University of Alaska, Fairbanks, and, um, you know, that we have a Division One ice hockey team and um, the, just the travel that's involved, right? We always get a lot of questions with that just in terms of location and our travel. You know, the closest partner rate we have is Anchorage, but everything's a flight for us. We have no bus trips. It's uh, everything's a flight. You know, our next closest one outside of uh uh, Anchorage is going to be Denver, University of Denver, Arizona State, Colorado College. So typically a lot of our flights are into the central or eastern time zone. Uh, it makes for a very unique experience. You know, we spend two weeks on the, two weeks on the road a lot of times. Um, so it's uh, it, it's fun. We get to see all parts of the United States and it's a very unique experience. I don't think there's any other you know, college program outside of Anchorage that gets to do the things that we get to do and travel the way that we travel. What was it like for you to get to put on that college ice hockey jersey? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I'm from from Fairbanks originally, so this is my my home, you know, to have friends and family, to be out the games and and things like that. You know, uh, I didn't get a lot of action in there in college, so I wasn't a a great goaltender, but, uh, you know, the times that I did, it was pretty special. And even when you're on the bench and around the team and, um, you know, just just getting a chance to wear the A-Bear logo. It's uh, It was a dream come true for me. That's, you know, what I wanted to do as a young kid watching the Nanooks play. And uh, fortunately, I was able to achieve that. And now sitting in this chair, it's just a really big blessing. How is that like growing up, watching them play, and then get to play for your hometown and your home state? Yeah, it's it's great. Like I said, it's, uh, it's pretty surreal, uh, you know, the first time putting on the jersey and you skate out at the Carlson Center. And we have a big inflatable uh-huh. polar bear, Nanook bear. So you come out under the bear and skate under it and you know the heart was definitely racing quite a bit and and um you know it's just what it's just what you do we're Fairbanks is a hockey town we're a small town we're about you know 90,000 people but we're very isolated as you can imagine you know you're you're not going to be able to drive 10 minutes and you're into the next town or 20 minutes and you're driving along highway you know you got two lane road to get down to Anchorage which is the next biggest town and you know so the community is, is is very strong here and you know, when you're in Fairbanks, you want to play for the Ice Dogs, which is the junior team, and then you want to play for uh, the Nana hockey team. And, uh, you know, I, I was blessed to be able to do do those things. What was that like, obviously, getting your start as a coach for the Fairbanks Ice Ice Dogs? Yeah, like I think like we kind of talked about early. It's just like, <clears throat> you know, it was uh, unexpected, uh, exciting. I, I was, uh, to be honest with you, I, I was uh, pretty... Uh, pretty green. So it was, uh, you know, I feel bad. The guy that I was working, Josh Howard, was the guy that 
hired me. He's now the head coach at Union uh, Division One, and uh, you know, I, I I joke around with him now. I'm like, man, I can't believe uh, I had to help and assist you during that time. I don't know how much value I provided outside of just being a a friend to you and being able to maybe have someone to listen to. So. Um, but again, thankful for, for what they did and, and being able to coach in Fairbanks. It was pretty neat coach, uh, uh, general manager, Rob Prophet. He's the old coach there. He gave me that start and I can't thank those people enough. And, um, you know, it was pretty fun being at the hometown bench, but, uh, like I said, it definitely, uh, definitely had some learning to do and, uh, definitely wasn't a great coach during that time. What was it like going to the twin city Northern lights to become their coach? Yeah, that was, uh. You know, that that to me was the, the start of more of, OK, let's see what we can do with coaching and try different things. Like I wanted to get experience as a head coach just to be able to learn and fail and, you know, make sure that uh, I really wanted to do it. And, you know, going down there, it's 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 a uh, junior B level so it, or tier three now. But it was, uh, you know, a lot of the kids are playing their pits pay to play. So they're paying us to be able to play on the team and. It's really just for a love of the game. Uh, a lot of them, some of them end up going to division three schools and, you know, maybe moving on from there. But, uh, you know, for the most part, they're just playing to play. And, um, you know, it was two of my oh, most favorite years. The The people that I got to coach there were awesome. I loved it. And, you know, it it's where really I fell in love with coaching and wanting to do more of it. And, you know, I still look back on those times and I think it might have been, you know, Two of the two of the most fun years I've ever had coaching or being involved in hockey. How is it like going to Tri City Storm to become an assistant coach there? Yeah, you know that was a that was an interesting experience. So I got to go back with Josh again, and so he was the head coach in Tri City. You know, and that was that was my first uh, learning about the business side of it too. Uh, we didn't do so great, and you know Josh was let go in early November. So you had your, you know, one of my best friends and mentors, you know, is getting let go and, and you know, just going through that, you realize that like, it is, it is a business, it's wins and losses, there's, it's results based, right? So, you know, dealing with that, going through that, the pressure of it, seeing the, the stress on it, it was good for me to learn that stuff and to go through that. And, you know, I, I did, you know, you look back on that and, and you learn a lot going through those situations and, um you know, realize how to handle yourself when, you know, the pressure is starting to ramp up and the, you know, the owners or the ADs or the fans or the, you know, the staff, the critics are starting to to come at you a little bit more. And you just really got to stay true to yourself and make sure you're not compromising who you are as a person and, and who you are as a coach. How was your experience like getting a coach on the club level helped you to where you eventually got the first start on the college level coaching yeah you know i think uh i think it was great um you know i needed that i needed that experience and especially too just to learn the different levels of junior hockey and you know where to recruit from and you know that's such a big piece of it right and in, in college athletics it's number one for me i mean you have to be able to recruit or your program's going to wither and die so uh, for me it was good to be able to learn the player pool different leagues um have contacts in those uh, places and, um, you know, obviously served well when, you know, transitioned into college hockey and both the division three level and now at the division one level. What was your experience like going to Marine University to become a head coach there? You know, it was good. I, going through the interview process was uh, the long interview process it was a full day where, you know, it was on campus and that was before all the different interviews before that. But, you know, the experience there was great. I mean, the people that I got to work with, going into a college setting, you know, college is a different animal with uh, uh, being in a large organization and you're not just dealing with an owner and a general manager. Now you're dealing with professors and faculty and staff and admissions and housing and uh, making sure that you have good relationships with all those people. I think it was very uh, eye-opening for me and, um, you know, we had some success there. It was a lot of fun and um, again, another really good group of people that I got to be a part of, uh, you know, coaching and teaching and was very thankful for my time there as it led me to get an opportunity here. What were some of your biggest accomplishments at Marine University? Yeah, the, I mean, probably the biggest one for, for us just in terms of, you know, results was just being able to beat St. Norbert College. You know, we 
their perennial powerhouse in uh, Division Three college hockey for those that follow along, and they've built a great program. And we played played in the same play in the same and played in the same conference as them. And you know, being able to beat them, we you know beat them at their home rink, which is a tough thing to do. So great and. You know, just we were, we were very close to making the tournament. It's a it's kind of strange. It's eleven team tournament. Uh, they just added another team, but we were the last team out that year. So you know, close to being able to make the NCAA national tournament. It was a great year and uh, a lot of fun. And um, you know, still stay in touch with some of those guys too. What was that like returning back home to your alma mater to become the head coach there? Yeah, it was good. You know, it was. Uh, I, I never thought I'd come back up to Fairbanks. You know, and back up to Alaska. I thought you know my my path would take me elsewhere. But you know, Dallas Ferguson, who's now the assistant coach at Denver University. Um, I played for Dallas before as a player and, you know, had a chance after he called me up and offered me the position to be able to go back home. My wife's from, well, I guess girlfriend at the time, but my wife's from Fairbanks too. And thought it was a good chance for us to be able to go back home. It's, uh, you know, been some different turbulent times, some coaching changes and things like that. But, you know, fortunately for for me, it, it's worked out really well. And, um, you know, we've had a chance to be able to start our family here, three kids and, been it's it's been great it's been everything that i could ask for and humbled by it and yeah we will just hope that i'm uh i'm doing a good job with it I, it's it's a lot entrusted just being from here it's a very important part of the community and knowing that you have that responsibility and uh it definitely weighs on you but uh you know hopefully at the end of it it can say that i left it in a better place and you know it's been a it's been a lot of fun along the way with it in 2018 what was it like when you got announced to become the next head coach for your alma mater yeah terrifying right like i think that was the biggest thing it's like okay well it's time to you know the, the experiences that you had in the past and being a younger person, you just have to put it together and do the best that you can. But, you know, to say that I was ready to do that, I, I don't think so. Um, but sometimes, you know, the best opportunities are when you least expect it. And that's what definitely happened there. And, you know, I, I think we've had a lot of good people that have surrounded me with it, our staff and people that have been there before me, um, you know, like Dallas and Tavis McMillan and guys that had previously coached the team, Lance West that were very big mentors for me that helped in that transition. And, you know, you, you'd kind of just jump two feet in and, and learn a lot of different things along the way. And, you know, definitely that first year wasn't, you know, maybe as smooth as, you know, it is going now. Uh, but again, it was, taught me a lot. And, you know, but I think those first reactions, you're you're excited, but you're, you're definitely, I think I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I was scared. Of course, when you got announced and, you became the youngest coach in NCAA history. What was that feeling like being in the record books for being the youngest coach in NCAA history for ice hockey? Yeah, well, it didn't last very long. David Carl took it from me right away after he got into Denver. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's good. It's, you know, it's something you, you can read about. It's a stat, but it's not, you know, wasn't that important. I think the biggest thing was just how you're, you've been entrusted with this uh, this big part, right? It goes, extends bigger than hockey here and it's a fabric of the community and you're the guy that's leading it. You're kind of the CEO of the program. And, you know, that to me was the biggest thing and uh, more of what I was thinking about. But obviously it's kind of a cool stat there for those couple months until DC got it. How did you take, and once you became the coach, build the culture from obviously your time as a player to building it now as a head coach? Well, it's nice. I mean, a lot of it was built in with it too, just of what was previously there. Our, our program's values were work ethic and commitment. And we just went to redefine what maybe those two things had met, right? I think they're pretty, you know, there's always a lot of those words, right, with it. And so, you know, I think for us, it was just redefining that and then trying to live it every day. I don't think it's too complicated. I think your culture is something that, you can see it's not something that you talk about. And I think the guys that we brought in here have, are living that. They're 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 hard workers. They're it's a blue collar area. So we gotta have blue collar players and um, you know, they're committed to the program and you know, committed to, you know, some of the adversity that we have to deal with here and do it with a smile on their face. So, um, you know, I think it's a lot of the people that you bring in and we've had a lot of good people that have surrounded it and built this culture up. As an alma mater of the school and a player, what was that transition like from being a player to now getting to coach on the bench and leading your team? Yeah, it's a big honor. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. And, it, and it, I guess it gives you some perspective too, because, 
you know, I wasn't a, obviously wasn't a great player, but it was the coaching staff that treated me so well and the people that treated me so well. And I still had a great experience as a player, even without the playing time. And I, I wanted to make sure that our players still had that too. And I think the community, the, the, the staff, the, uh, just the people that are involved in it and teammates to be able to help make everyone's experience great and have proud alumni, whether you played, you know, you're an All-American or you're Colton Pareko playing in the NHL or, you know, you're the third string goalie like I was. I think it's uh, important to make everybody feel a part of it, welcomed. And, you know, I think the guys that we have here and the staff that we have here have, have done that. And, you know, I think that was the biggest thing transitioning is just making sure that continued on. What does a typical game day look like as a player? Yeah, as a player, you know, as a player, we try to make it them not worry about much outside of playing, right? So they would, a typical game day, they would come to the rink about 1045. Um, We will have a chapel with them um, from our life coach, Ryan Reinheller. So he'll do a chapel with the guys. We'll do a meeting about 1115. Uh, they'll be short and then uh, 12 o'clock they'll get on the ice for a pregame skate you know afterwards it's uh, you know have a meal and then they'll have some downtime come back at five we'll have some meetings they'll get ready for the game seven o'clock's the game and you know they play post-game meal recovery and you know usually do it all over again the next night or you know they'll have a day off on that Sunday so it's pretty wash, rinse, repeat for us. And, you know, player coach, it's, you know, the the timeline with the interactions are very similar as a coach. You're adding in, you know, a little bit more into, you know, meetings and staff meetings and things like that too. Who are some of the typical teams that you play against? Yeah. So we're, we're an independent right now. We were in the WCHA before that we were in the CCHA, WCHA we were in with like Michigan Tech, Minnesota, Mankato, Bemidji State, Northern Michigan, Lake State, CCHA was, yeah, University of Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Lake State, Northern, Bowling Green, Ferris, so uh, Western Michigan, so more of the Michigan schools during the 90s and, and early 2000s before the, the Big Ten came in in hockey and kind of shook things up. But uh, now we're, as an independent, we play a lot of the independents home and away. So we'll play Anchorage, who's an independent, Arizona State's an independent, Lindenwood University is an independent, Long Island University is an independent. And then we'll just play a lot of different schools. So this year we're playing, you know, we've played Penn State, we're playing Denver, we're playing Notre Dame. Last year we had a chance, you know, we played um, University of Minnesota. So you play a just different schedule. We play teams from East Coast, West Coast, played Cornell and Clarkson in in, uh, New York last year. You know, so you have uh, a lot of different travel and a lot of different road trips and, you know, some teams that make the trip back up to Fairbanks as well. What is that like, obviously, getting to play some of those teams like Maine, Princeton, yeah. Yale, Harvard? Yeah, it's it's fun. It's, it's a different experience, too. Like, our program hasn't played those teams as much, so it's been fun to be able to travel out east and play. Like, last year we played, you know, along with the teams I mentioned, we played Maine and Vermont. So being able to see some different older arenas, some, some traditional programs there with, obviously, a lot of – a lot of history to it uh and then playing at like you know 3m arena and in, in minnesota i mean it, we have a lot of minnesota we have a number of minnesota guys so that chance to be able to play play there at mariucci is a you know a great experience for them so uh it's it's fun uh it's fun to see all the different buildings i'm hoping maybe during my time i'll get to see all of them so that'll be a, a goal of mine it's almost like the the major league ballpark where people go through in the summer and check off their list so so far I just keep checking boxes off of road teams we played on and It'll keep continuing, and as we're an independent, I think it's what makes us unique, too, is just the experience that we can give to our student-athletes. What does the recruitment process look like for those prospective student-athletes looking to play college ice hockey? Yeah, for us, it's, uh, you know, we do a lot in Western Canada, so we do a lot in British Columbia and Alberta, you know, a little bit in the North American Hockey League as well, but usually we're recruiting, you know, somewhere between 17 and 20-year-olds, and you know, for us, there's, you know, a video identification and then an in-person identification, and then typically, um, you know, phone calls with advisors, with uh, coaches, with parents, with the players. And then at that point, you know, if we're both feel like there's something that can move forward with it, offer will be put out and, you know, potentially an official visit will happen with the team. So uh, sometimes it moves really quick. I'm sure you talked with enough coaches. Sometimes it moves lightning fast. And then sometimes it's, you know, more of a slower process and, you know, dealt with different things, but just making sure that they get all the information, you know, you set a firm deadline with them and, 
you know, some, some, some people it is the right fit and some people it's not. And I think we're doing a better job at finding, you know, having early identification of guys that fit into this culture and what we're all about and could be good fits here. How's it like, obviously having those prospective student athletes come to Alaska and get to visit just the state of Alaska and even your campus? Yeah, it's a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, we have tour buses that come through here all summer long. You know, you talk about with people that come up through the airport it's a once in a lifetime experience and so for players to be able to do that and student athletes to be able to do that um, whether it's a visit or whether that's a uh, you know a four-year experience I mean you know it, it's a it's a once in a lifetime thing it's it's life-changing the things that they get to do here they don't get to do anywhere else you're not going to go out somewhere else and, and find a glacier you're not going to go out you know somewhere else than you know, go on, on a on a moose hunt or go out salmon fishing. It's just different. And I, I think our guys get to experience things that, you know, people save up their entire lives to be able to try to do. Of course, as a head coach and alma mater, what is that like getting to see those players get to put on that same jersey that you put on as a player? It's awesome. It's, a, it's probably one of the neatest thing, the first college game for those guys. I think I think that's a great moment. And then, you know, the senior, the senior game is always a tough one too. I mean, kind of the final time and we do a big press conference and, you know, the whole team comes into it and it's a public press conference for that, for that senior game. So those two experiences are pretty neat. They would, you know, define kind of the entrance into the birth, into the program. And then, you know, the finale with the program, it's uh, two of my favorite, favorite things to see uh, just sitting back as a coach. As a head coach, what is it like seeing your players go on from the college level to the NHL level? It's awesome. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's what we talk about in the recruiting process too. It's like, you know, they want to play at the highest level and it, and it, you know, it's, it's NHL, it's American league. It's, you know, playing pro in Europe. I mean, you know, a lot of different avenues for our guys. And, you know, I think that's great. And then I think it's great too, to see them, you know, be leaders as well, um, whether that's in the business community or, you know, their job community or whether that's as families, you know, I think it's, it's, it's cool to get that text or, you know, that card in the mail about them getting married or they're having their first kid or, um, you know, they just got this promotion at work or they started this thing. I mean, you know, it, hockey, hockey's hockey. It ends for everybody. You see Gretzky on the, on the TNT screen. So, you know, and doing different wineries and stuff. It ends at some point for everybody, no matter how great you are. And there's a transition period. So it's good for us to see not only them playing at the highest levels, but then being able to transition to life after hockey and, you know, what that's what that's a part, being great family members and being great community members. What are some of your future plans for the Alaska Norwich program? Yeah, it's, so for us, I think some of the future, uh, you know, future plans – for us is, you know, at some point we would like to get into a conference, you know, when that, when that happens, there's a lot of changes with, you know, the NCAA landscape, but you know, for us, I, I don't know if there's a lot that uh, we want to change. I think what makes us unique, what makes us special is the people and the experience and, you know, that hasn't changed. And, you know, we, we don't want that part to change. Obviously we'd love to have a few more wins and, you know, continue to send more guys off to the highest levels of hockey and, uh, continue to have high graduation rates, but you know, at the end of the day, I think the program was uh, was built, uh, you know, with a strong foundation, and you know, I'm just kind of a part of it, and I think it'll continue uh, continue to adapt with the times, but the foundation will always be there. What advice would you give those high school? players and even international players looking to play college ice hockey? Yeah, I mean, I think for for that would just be to make sure your academics are in order would be one. Uh, the second thing would just be to reach out to schools that you'd have interest in. And then the third would just be to make sure that you're, you know, playing in a spot where you're going to get an opportunity. And that's really just junior hockey, you know, whether that's abroad and, you know, Europe or whether that's, uh, you know, here in the United States or Canada. It's If you're playing in a tier two or tier one junior league wherever you're at coaches will know but you know you know emailing a few calling a few uh is always a good idea and then you know your academics are important because you know there's you know i think we're at 63 now um but there's only a small number of division one schools so if your academics are bad you can cross out the ivies you can cross out high academic standard schools and now you're down to half so uh it's it's not a you know difficult formula be a good person do your work and then you know if you're good enough you'll get seen what advice would you give those college ice hockey players looking to play in the nhl or the echl yeah i mean i think uh you know you have to be flexible right i think a lot of the guys that come through our level are going to be you know higher scores right now they're transitioning to college and 
or sorry, into the pros, and they're going to have to play a little bit of a different role. So the guys that are more versatile, uh, the guys that are willing to accept coaching and and willing to adapt their game to make sure that they make it at the highest levels, that would be the advice that I would give them because, you know, you might be a first power play, first line player at our level, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do that at the American League level or the NHL. And, you know, learning how to be a responsible player is an important piece um, and learning what the coach wants from you uh, and uh, is an important piece to being able to make that transition to pro hockey. What advice would you give those college ice hockey players that are looking to represent the national team, whether it's Team USA or Team Canada, to go to the Olympics to perform? Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty high level of player that you have to be to do that. I mean, I think it's really the same thing, right? You're you're going in and the pyramid, uh, you're getting to the top of the pyramid in terms of players. So, you know, obviously the way you conduct yourself is important as well. Um, but, you know, I think the same advice would apply. You got to make sure that you're willing to, you know, play a role and put, do what the coach and general manager ask of you. And I think if you're able to do that and you're obviously have the skill set, then, um, you're going to find find some success there. What advice would you give those future college coaches looking to get started in coaching? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good good question. Don't do it. No, um, I, I think, uh, you know, I, it's a lot of attrition, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't know if what other coaches say. I'd be actually kind of curious to see, but I think it's attrition. Like, if you just do a good job and you work really hard and you're willing to grind it out, I, I think that most guys will end up making it if they do a decent oh. job. So. I just think it's uh, there's a lot of sacrifice to it and how you balance the rest of your 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 outside of sport life is is critical. And I think I don't think it's always the easiest thing at times. So if you want to work, you know, long hours and grind away, you'll find a way to get into college hockey or to be a coach. But, you know, it's it's a balance all the time and you don't want to sacrifice other things in your life. You know, the game doesn't always love you back, um, but your family will. So making sure you don't don't sacrifice those important things for, for the game. What advice would you give those future head coaches that are looking to start their own program? Yeah, just be yourself. That's the biggest thing. I think it's probably a pretty pretty common answer, but you need to be yourself because it has to your team has to take on the identity of you. And you know, if you're not true to yourself, if you don't take risks, if you second guess yourself, you know, it, it's not going to it's not going to be authentic. So I would just say you got to be yourself, be who you are, run it the way that you want to run it and you know, if it doesn't work out, you learn from it. And the next time you do it, you're going to be better for it. What advice would you give people such as yourself that are looking to coach at their alma mater as a head coach? That's a good question. Um, gosh, there's so many. I, I would say the same thing, right? You still, but I think the big thing is you have to, uh, you have to make sure that you don't lose the traditions of what was brought before you because, you know, you were proud to play for that program and obviously want to go back to it, right? So, you can't lose the traditions, but at the same point, you got to put your own spin on it as well. And it's, uh, will be a little bit different. Um, you don't want it to be the exact same, uh, but you don't want to lose the foundation of what's been before you and the sacrifices that have been before you and, uh, the coaches and players that have gotten you gotten the program to this point or to the point where you take over. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the program? Actually? Yeah. So we, uh, you know, we have Alaska Nanook hockey, uh, Twitter, Instagram uh, pages, so people can check those things out. Uh, AlaskanAnnex.com for our website uh, to learn more about it. And then I'm on Twitter at Eric Largen. Pretty simple. Thank you again, Coach Aaron Largen, for your interview. And best of luck in your future at Alaska Norwich for your as the men's ice hockey coach. Thanks a lot. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Aaron. Eric, for your interview and best luck in your future. Thanks a lot, Brandon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.